Tesla didn't just build a faster motor. They changed what an electric motor can be. And the twist is how a single material wrapped around a spinning core turned into a warning shot to the entire industry. Roll back to 2017, Tesla is racing to scale the Model 3 and nearly runs out of cash. Most car makers would play it safe. Tesla does the opposite. They start rethinking everything batteries, software, factories, and then the motor itself. By 2020, Tesla hints at a secret. The breakthrough shows up in 2021, inside a car that looks like a normal sedan, but moves like a rocket. The Model S Plaid, inside it is a rotor wrapped in carbon fiber. A rotor is the spinning part of a motor. Wrap it in the right material, and you can spin it faster without it ripping itself apart. Faster spin means more power in a smaller package. But wait, this next part changes everything. Most electric motors hit a limit because the metal in the rotor expands when it spins fast and heats up. Think of it like a metal donut trying to stretch at crazy speed. If it expands too much, the motor loses efficiency or fails. Tesla's answer was to wrap the rotor in a carbon fiber sleeve that squeezes it tight. Carbon fiber is light, very strong, and handles heat. That squeeze, called compression, keeps everything in line. The result? Plaid's rotor can spin around 20,000 revolutions per minute, while many rivals stop closer to 16,000. That extra headroom isn't bragging rights. It's what lets a family-looking sedan do 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds on a prep surface with the right tires. You thought that was big? Try this. The Plaid does the quarter mile in the nines, with over a thousand horsepower, a top speed around 200 miles per hour, and it still seats five. Meanwhile, a Porsche Taycan Turbo Cess, a benchmark car, does zero to 60 in about 2.6 seconds, has about 200 to 225 miles of EPA range depending on spec, and costs well over $180,000. The Plaid usually undercuts that price by tens of thousands, and has around 350 miles of EPA range. The numbers don't just say quick, they say quick and keeps going. But what if I told you the real trick isn't the speed, it's the consistency. Here's where the carbon wrap helps more than people think. That tight rotor lets Tesla run a tiny gap between the spinning rotor and the stationary stator. A tiny gap means a stronger magnetic pull, which means more torque for the same energy. Less wasted heat, less stress on cooling. That's why the Plaid can repeat hard launches more often before power fades. Let me tell you this, in EVs, efficiency is king. The EPA uses MPG, miles per gallon equivalent, to compare energy use. A high number means you go farther on the same energy. The Model S Plaid scores around 102 mpg combined. That's more efficient than many performance EVs. The Taycan Turbo Cess sits closer to the 70s to low 80s mpg. Lucid air trims can reach even higher efficiency, but at Plaid level performance, Lucid's Sapphire costs roughly a quarter million dollars and is built in small numbers. Perspective matters. So how did Tesla pull this off technically? They had to solve a weird problem. Carbon and metal expand at different rates when heated. If you wrap the rotor wrong, the sleeve slips. If you wrap it too tight, it cracks. Tesla had to wind the sleeve under huge tension, so the compression stayed constant at high speed. Simple idea? Hard math? Harder manufacturing. And here's where it gets wild. The sleeve also helps the rotor survive at tip speeds where the edge is traveling faster than a jetliner. That's why others didn't rush this into production. It's not a catalog part. Now zoom out. The motor didn't happen alone. Tesla has been tying the motor to its battery, its software, and its factories. In 2020, Tesla revealed the 4680 battery format. Bigger cells, fewer parts, a stiff pack that doubles as structure. The ramp has been bumpy, but Texas-built Model Ys now use structural packs with front and rear giga castings that replace hundreds of pieces with a few giant cast parts. Fewer parts mean fewer robots, faster lines, and lower cost. And that lower cost gives Tesla options drop prices to grab share or hold prices and pocket margin to fund the next leap. But wait, the motor itself is evolving. In 2023, Tesla said the next-gen drive unit will use no rare earth materials in the magnets. Rare earths are hard to mine, and price swings hurt planning. Moving away from them cuts risk and cost. That's not a small change. It means redesigning the motor's magnetic system so it still hits the power and efficiency targets without those elements. Now, the suspense does this mean Tesla has already won? Not so fast. Rivals are not asleep. Lucid built a tiny hyper-dense motor that is light and powerful. Porsche is rolling out a new Taycan with faster charging and stronger performance. BYD dominates affordable segments and floods markets with good enough EVs at prices that make accountants smile. And Remac showed what unlimited budget can do with the Nevra. 
Tesla's edge isn't that others are slow. It's that Tesla connects everything. The motor, the battery, the software, the factories, and even the sales model. Here's the other half of Tesla's Play software. Every car ships with a computer, cameras, and over-the-air updates. Tesla's full self-driving software learns from a huge stream of real-world video. Whether you like FSD or not, that data moat is massive. When Tesla improves traction control, thermal limits, or inverter behavior, they can push it to the fleet overnight. A motor is hardware. The inverter is the brain that tells it how to spin. Code there can change how the car feels tomorrow. Real-world costs matter too. Electricity prices vary, but on average, a plaid can cost under 5 to 7 cents per mile to fuel at home rates in many places. Compare that to a gas super sedan that might burn 20 cents to 30 cents per mile at today's prices. Over 15,000 miles a year, that difference can buy you tires. And yes, you will need them. Reliability is the quiet question. High power EVs stress batteries, inverters, and cooling. Tesla has learned the hard way. Early Model S drive units had issues years ago. The Plaid's carbon sleeved motor, better cooling, and revised pack show higher durability than first gen cars, and service rates have trended down as designs mature. It's not perfect, no brand is, but the gap between track mode abuse and day to day driving is shrinking, and the carbon wrapped rotor isn't a dead end. It's a platform. Smaller, cheaper variants can push mid-range cars. Stronger versions can power the next Roadster if it arrives the way Tesla teased it. Even the Cybertruck's tri-motor trims lean on lessons from Plaid about cooling and sustained power. Because towing at highway speed is like doing a hill climb forever. You thought that was big? Try the factory math. Shanghai, Berlin, and Texas are built to stamp, cast, wind, and assemble at speed. Tesla's direct sales model cuts dealer layers. Fewer layers mean tighter price control. This is why when costs drop, Tesla can move prices in weeks, not quarters. Legacy brands can do this too, but the software first stack and the in-house motor gives Tesla more dials to turn. So who strikes back? BUID with scale and price. Porsche with feel and brand. Lucid with tech density. Chinese startups with fast iteration. The race isn't over, but the carbon-wrapped rotor marks a line in the sand. It proved that a mass-market brand can ship hypercar-style acceleration, keep decent range, and do it at under six figures. Not cheap, but not fantasy. But wait, this final piece might be the most important. Tesla's next drive unit shown in investor materials targets lower cost, no rare earths, and more compact packaging that can be built faster. Pair that with maturing 4,680 lines, bigger castings, and smarter software, and you get a curve that keeps bending down in cost and up in performance. When that happens, the motor you've just seen may look like the starting gun, not the finish line. The story isn't that Tesla made the fastest sedan. It's that they took a fragile edge case spinning a rotor at aircraft-like speeds and made it a product you can order online. They solved the physics, industrialized the process, and linked it to a factory and software system that keeps improving. The suspense now is simple. If this is what the middle of the movie looks like, what does the ending look like?